What's going on YouTube? It is your boy Ray Bands and I am back with another video and in my bag. And today I want to teach you how important it is to focus on the wicks when you want to find high quality trade setups on a lower time frame. So you can see on my chart right now, I'm on the 15 minute chart. This is high frequency trading. So you really don't have to go above a 15 minute. If you really wanted to, you could stay on the five minute, but I like to work down from the 15. Now, before I get into this concept, I want to show you how to do this effectively or how to study it effectively. So when you get into the live market, the tendency for you to actually see it correctly is there. OK, now we know from past videos that we should find our major zones on the 15. So according to this chart, which is the live market, we can clearly see where our major zones are. So I'm going to go grab a horizontal line and I'm just going to mark these major zones. Let's make this white and two. Let's go get another horizontal line. And put it down here. About right there. There we go. Let's make that white and two. OK, so I have I have my major pivot zones on the 15 marked. And I know that from what I see on this chart, that the best place to sell is at the top. The best place to buy is at the bottom. But what happens when price gets in that area and it actually starts to cycle to the next pivot point? We want to be able to use the wicks to pinpoint areas where we can find ourselves catching great trades. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But before I do that, I want to show you some techniques on how to study the past market better. So when we look at the wicks, it'll make more sense when we drop down the time frames. The first thing that I want to show you how to find is the active trend line. I'm sorry, not the active trend line, the active level line break or the active pattern that shows you that the uh, momentum has changed. So it's three patterns that can show you that. And you would know this if you have my course. I'm going to name them right here. We have a power pattern. We have a Pisces pattern and we have a level line break. Now, in my discord community, if you don't know what those things are, you can join the discord community and ask, say, hey, what is a level line break? What is a power pattern? What is a what is a, um, a Pisces pattern? And they can point you in the right direction on how you can get that information or help you understand what that is. You can also go to previous videos and find out what that is as well. So I just want to focus on this right here. This right here is a power pattern. OK, so we're going to take this and just drop. One vertical line on that, which is right here. I just want to start it right here. I'm going to show you something. Normally, when we study the past market and we find a pattern, and we say, OK, from this area, look, the move was great. OK, it was great structure right here, especially according to the wicks, which uh, I'll show you how to pick the wicks or which wicks to focus on. But as of right here, we have some wick structure and then we have this power pattern that led to a great move afterwards. This is the 15 minute chart. So you have well over an hour of just one direction. OK, now, when you want to find out if you're looking at a past market where price actually was. It was not this candle. So if you put the vertical line right here saying, hey, this is where price was when uh, the power pattern formed, that's actually incorrect. Price was actually here. Why is that? Because the open of the candle after the pattern that forms is actually the close of this candle. So it's always one candle after. OK, so for instance, when this candle closed, it was actually on this candle already. So you would always put it one ahead. So let me see that time at that point was 18. So if I drop down to the one minute chart and I go all the way to that green line, let's go find our green line. Give me a second. Right here, price was right here. I'm actually going to get a trend line so you can see. Price was right there. Let's shrink that so you can know exactly which one I'm looking at. I'm just going to make that a different color. 
Well, that's the same color as the chart. So we'll just do that. Okay. This is where price was when the level line break happened, when the power pattern happened. And as you can see, the move after complements that. Now, when we see a level line break or a power pattern on a higher time frame, right? This is the one minute. So if I go back up to the 15 minute, when we see that, uh oh, let's put this back. When we see that, what we're looking for on the lower time frame is a pullback. That's all we're looking for. We're just looking for a pullback so we can take an entry on the pattern that we saw. Now, because we're looking at a 15 minute chart and that's where we've seen the level line break at or the power pattern, the Pisces pattern, whatever you identify, the length of that trade should be 45 minutes. Now, if you want to drop to the 15 minute, I'm sorry, to the five minute. So we're on the 15 minute right here. If we drop to the five minute and find that same line, we look at the pivot zones. OK, not too close. If you wanted to take a 15 minute trade in this area, waiting for the pullback is actually essential for your win, because if you wait for the pullback, this would have happened. You could have caught your 15 minute entry and you would have been in profit. However, if you didn't wait for the pullback, the chances of you getting spiked out. Is a, is a little higher than if you wait for the pullback. So you notice how you see the wicks right here. You see how this is moving down, but it's still structured within this move down. OK, so if we go all the way to the one minute and we're still waiting on the same pullback, we see that both our five minute chart and our uh, 15 minute chart looks OK. But this is the pullback that we're waiting for right here. So once it starts to cycle back, we could find ourselves catching a 15 minute trade here, a 45 minute trade here, a pullback right here, 15 minute and a 45 minute and right here. And on this time frame, you could see that it's a trend line right here. So those level line breaks, the entry patterns that signify that you should start looking for this type of direction trade on the higher time frame can help you zone in on the lower time frame. But when you go to the lower time frame, you're not just looking for like regular pullbacks. You're looking for shapes, trend lines, something that confirms, hey, this is going to be going down for a good amount of time. That's what you're looking for. So if we're looking at this area and we know that we're looking for down trades and we see this type of structure, when I see structure like this and I start to see price fall below, that just confirms bear to me when I see something like this. The market's not going anywhere. It's more sideways than it is up. Hopefully that makes sense. OK, so because I like to view the market like that, I was actually looking one day and I said, you know what? I like my Hakanashi candles. I really do. I think it's the easiest way to be able to find really good trades. But I was like, what happens when you get on the chart and price is already you know, past your pocket. It's already like your entry pattern is way up here, but price is way down here. How can I find myself still being able to catch trades or to understand better when is a great time to start hopping into the market and catching trades? And that's when I started looking at my wicks just a little bit more. And I started to notice that, oh, in the middle of this move, even though this is straight down right here, we can have some sideways movement. We can have triangles form, head and shoulders form. It's, it's all type of patterns that can actually form on this on the lower time frame. So it's two things that I want to tell you before I get into that. The first one is just because the color is blue does not mean on the lower time frame that the shape is going to match what the color is showing you. That means even though this candle is blue right here, if you get on the one minute and you see a head and shoulders, the chances are that it's probably going to drop lower than what you think on the higher time frame. So you have to understand that, that the higher time frame influences what the lower time frame does, but the lower time frame creates what the higher time frame does. I know it's weird, but you have to think that way to understand your entry better. OK, so right here, because we, we know like, all right, the market is moving down right here. This is a past market that has already happened. We know where our active line was for us to enter if we were looking at this in an active market. But how can I understand how to view this better? So when it's happening in the live market, I can have a better chance of actually catching those trades. The second thing to help you understand that is the cycle. 
Ray, what do you mean by cycle? Every time you have on a higher time frame a color switch, that is a cycle. So from this candle to this candle, that's a cycle. Then it's cycled for sellers for this long. Then it, it closed this color. That's a cycle. And then you notice it was another change right here. So that's a cycle right here. And you will start to see like, okay, even though I have this up movement right here in this area, the cycle changed multiple times, which means I probably have some type of sideways movement on my lower time frame. So because the cycle is so frequent in this little bitty area, you can now start to look at the wicks to get more information on when this is coming. And the cool thing is, is you'll find yourself taking entries way before the entry pattern so you can utilize trades in this area as well. You don't have to wait as long to be able to catch trades. However, if you're taking trades off of a wick and you do not have a confirmed entry pattern on your higher time frame, you should be looking for quicker trades. What do I mean? Because on my higher time frame, in this area right here, I have a confirmed pattern to enter the market. I should be looking for 45 minute, 15 minute and five minute trades or five minute entries. But before I take those entries on my lower time frame, i.e. the one minute preferably, I want to enter off of pullbacks in structured areas. We're going to break down what this trend area looks like. All the patterns that we see, the trend lines that we can identify so you can understand when you do get that move and you do see the market moving, the opportunities that you usually miss, you can find yourself catching because you've studied it. OK, those are the two things you have to understand, the wicks and the cycle. OK, so let's go ahead and study this little piece right here. We have a down moving market. We have wicks. Matter of fact, let's break down the wicks really quick because this is the 15 minute. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. OK, this white line right here is getting on my nerves. I'm just going to take that away. And we're going to sit this and make sure we could, uh, we connect as many wicks as we can. We're just going to turn this yellow just to make sure we pay attention to that. We'll get another trend line. And we'll turn this yellow. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to drop down to the five minute notice the cycle. See the cycles right here? We see shape, but it doesn't really make sense. We just know that the cycles are changing in this area. So if I drop down to the five minute, which is a lower time frame, you're going to notice that that cycle is going to make a little bit more sense. OK, you see how we can see more shape. That just means it makes more sense. That's what I mean by that. However, it's not the cleanest because this right here is an entry pattern. And then after we have indecisive candles, this right here is an entry pattern. But you see how it, it doesn't move. Usually when you see entry patterns like this on the five minute, you should be able to say, hey, I should have at least three candles moving in one direction. We don't get that right here. So that means that it doesn't make sense. So if we go down to the one minute and we find that same area, watch how much more clear it is. Watch this. Let's go back and find it. You see how it's more shape. It's more space. Now you can find entries off of this area. Now, the cool thing is, is now because we're on the one minute and we do not have that confirmed entry pattern or level line break on the higher time frame, we know that we're looking for quicker trades. And we also know that we're probably going to be trading off of a zone because we're trading off of wicks. <clears throat> so uh, since we're trading off of those wicks, now watch this. Because I have this. Now, I don't know if y'all see this pattern. This is a pattern right here. OK. Strong move right here, pattern right here. We have a move. This is the neckline, comes back to the neckline, falls above. This is a sideways market, comes back to retest that, falls. Once I see this little piece right here, I am biased for the sale. Now, you notice how this is the same area where the level line break happens. Now, the reason why I designed the patterns like that is because if you can just wait past this part, and you get those level line breaks, you can have the market pushing down for a certain amount of time. And the, the chances of you winning more trades and multiple trades in one sitting is higher. But I noticed that some people just don't like to wait. They see patterns. They see the market start moving. 
and they just want to hop in the market. So I'm just showing you how you can utilize everything on the chart. Right. But when I'm studying this and I know that my level line break was right here, I can go down and see, OK, I know that I can enter. I can enter 45 minute, 15 minute and five minute entries. I personally say enter the 15 minutes because you can get multiple entries. Like if you 15 minute every pullback on this trend, right? Like this is not a pullback. This is not a pullback. That's too weak. You need to see something like this before you enter something like this before you enter, right? You see how this happened. So on this pullback right here, because it's under that in the context of where this happened, look, boom, boom, under this area right here, which is the area under this retest area, this is cool because it has some type of context with it. But when it's pulling back right here, you see how it's under, confirm, boom, that that's a good area. So you knowing that, and then also it's a little bit more obvious too. So taking the 15 minutes in those areas just is a beautiful situation. And this is, this is a trend, but I want to show you something. I need to go back up to the 15 minute and I need to go mark we're right here so i need to mark the end of it so the end of it was right here we're going to do this for multiple areas i need to get a vertical line and i just need to mark because i want this candle to be included i'm going to mark this candle that's where the cycle changed right there if i could just get in the middle there we go then we're going to go back to the one minute and let's see what this particular trend looked like All right, that's the end. All right, look at the trend. The first thing I want you to notice is the uh, the lower lows and lower highs. That's the first thing I want you to notice. So I'm gonna just show you how a trend behaves. Look right here. Went low, lower high, low, lower high, low, lower high do you see it this right here went low went sideways for a little bit really i could say all the way down here lower lower low lower high lower low equal high watch this so this was in this was a trend right now watch this really from here mm, it kind of respects the trend line kind of breaks it sometimes but this is technically still a trend just because it never every time the lower high came it never broke the previous low right here. But a market tendency, which I talked about this in a previous video, a market tendency is this. When it gets to a low and then it comes back up, it makes an equal high. See, this high should have been under here to qualify as it's still being in a trend. But because it made this, now you can have a telltale sign to know that this area is probably an entry area for you. That's why you got this movement right here. Came up again to the same area, pushed, and noticed how the cycle started to change. It was for sellers. It was for sellers. It was for sellers. It was for, uh-oh, even transitional structure. Even again, notice how the weight is starting to trade, uh, starting to change, though. So we have equal, still equal. All right, now buyers are in control. Last strong area push right here. That's why you're getting this movement right here. Now, notice this area is very spiky. You can find yourself catching some really good trades, though. Some three minute trades in this area, well timed off of good areas. You can get a lot of wins. But notice when it looks like this on the one minute, you know that it looks a certain way on your 15 minute. And you'll know, OK, I'm not looking for just down trades anymore because I'm in transitional structure. Every time I have price hit a new area or a new pivot point, I know that I need to wait for some type of structure. What do you mean, right? Well, let's go back up to the 15 minute and look at it. This was a pivot zone, right? So because this identified as a pivot zone, I'm going to stretch this all the way across. And we know that that's a good pivot zone because look, it caused structure over here too. This was in a current market, but it was something that stopped this from going down. And even though it tried to continue, it forced it up. It forced this. Look at all the wicks in this in these areas. If I just connect some of the wicks and I go back down to the lower time frame, I can see 
how I can find my, since these are wicks on the higher time frames, and I don't have a confirmed level line break like this right here. Don't get me wrong. I know that I could call this a level line break area, but you see how price gets above, falls back, gets above, falls back, gets above, falls back, gets above, falls back. Like it took forever to break. But when it did break, the move for buyers got a little bit stronger, but it did give you a lot of entries. So I'm just going to connect right here. Connect those wicks. And I'm going to get one more. I would color code, but I'm not trying to take too long. And I'm going to connect the bottom wicks right here. All right. Just connecting over. I just want to see multiple touches. And if I go all the way back down to my one and find my two green lines, give me a second. All right. I can see potential areas to take the market. Do you see it? Comes out. Make structure. Remember, I'm at a lower time frame, so I need to see some type of structure. Now, when I see structure like this on the one minute, I can go all the way down to the five second and pinpoint an entry that I want. But it's not necessary. I can wait for the touch, touch, pattern. See this? Even if I three minute right here, even though these first two candles were crazy, I still would have won that because I was willing to wait for the structure i'm not taking the first one i see because it doesn't always move that fast especially if it breaks below a zone you have to understand that it's other entities that think oh this is going to go down that's what forced this but because i'm referencing the higher time frame and i know okay it is going to go up i understand what's happening with the wicks i just need to see something obvious i need to see something that's going to encourage me to take this trade back up and usually when it breaks below and it makes structure below, when it comes back into the zone, the move is much more clean. See how it touches, falls, comes back, and then look, it's above, but then it comes back into that zone clean, right? Touches, look at the structure with the wicks. Watch this. The more wicks you see touch the line, the stronger the move. If I'm looking at this area, and it breaks this area this clean, I'm probably not going to see a lot of wicks touch. It already broke. So it coming back and making wicks is very rare. It's going to make structure under. If it if it breaks and then retest, it push away, retest, push away, and it's coming back up for another retest and it doesn't push away and, and actually leaves, it's a higher tendency for price to actually shoot back into the other direction because you have to understand if people are placing orders right here and they see that no matter how many orders they're putting, price is not flowing down, they're going to cancel that order, not for high frequency traders. I'm talking about the individuals who are trading to collect pips who actually move the market. They're going to cancel those trades because the market is not moving. And the buyers are going to see, oh, this is an opportunity. This is a great resistance area. Look at the structure. I'm going to go ahead and put a buy right here. And that's what causes this, even though the sellers tried to push it down one more time, buyers came in and was like, nah, mm-mm. And because this is these are Hakanashi candles, you see how the average that that's just a confirmed average. So in this area right here, three minute trade is a smack, but you're waiting on structure. Notice how on this side, it didn't break above. You got one wick, two wick, three wick, four wick, five wick. And then look. Look at that, a nice little move right here. So if you know how to use these wicks, you could have been on the five second and caught at least two trades in this area. Well, I say at least one. At least one trade in this area off of these wicks right here. There we go. Okay. So look at look at the pink line right here. Look at the pink line. So with the pink line in this area, you see how it may structure, which on the five second, this would have been much more exaggerated and you would have been able to see this move better. But hopefully you get the concept, right? Touch, touch. You see the rejections in the area. Just this catching this move is easier and it's a quicker trade too especially on the five second you don't have to go that low but i'm just showing you that this works on every single time frame but look at look at the exaggerated shape right here too so let me go back up to my one minute chart and we can go look at that shape and get back into that same area and see what this this market looks like okay actually i think i was on the 15. All right. So we have this area, made this structure, pushed up. Now it's coming back down this way. Now, notice how 
the wicks. You see how when it's in the middle of a move. So if I see that it comes off a pocket and makes a lot of wicks like this, yes, you can trade this, but it's a little harder to catch trades when the wicks are going both ways like that. So you really have to pay attention to structure on the lower time frame. It's different when you have a push to a zone and it comes off of a clean zone. So this zone right here or this move right here wasn't the cleanest. But notice at the top how I have one, two, three wicks and then the push down here and then it, it comes up back right here twice. You see how that can be trend like right there. And then we have a move. So because this is the 15 minute chart, I'll mark those wicks because they all come back in the same area before they start to move. And then this rides all the way down. I'm going to turn that red and then I can drop to the one minute chart. And I can show you what that looks like when you use the higher time frame to find your structures like that. Your lower time frame will make more sense, I promise. Look at that. You see how accurate that is? You also notice how the structure, when you see a clear move like this, if it comes all the way back up to that area and you get that doji, even if you get the entry pattern and you take you know, a trade after that, the chances of you winning that trade is even higher because you have a trend line matching with a zone a very good zone that's a good move off that zone so when you see that look how that's just a perfect trade that is a that's an easy trade to take because you're coming off of something that's confirmed and it's from the higher time frame right so that's three things lining up with your one trade that's a high quality trade right there so notice how the market just doesn't go down 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 it, it is comprised of different type of moves sometimes a trend can look more like this. You see, this is this is an easy trend to follow just because of how spaced and how long the moves are. And sometimes the trend, this is trending too, but look at it. Boom, boom, right here. Now, if we were looking at the rules of a trend, right, the trend would technically be over here. Why is that? Because it like this was the low, the last low, and it came all the way back past that. It also hit this zone too, but I'm not even going to talk about that. It came back up to the same area, still respected the trend line and broke below. Not the most pretty. Look, did it again right here. Pushed down, came up, same zone, pushed away. This time it didn't get back, pushed away. So if we're looking at this for a trend and we were taking this trade and then we started to, we see the entry off the trend line. Yes, we could take this for a three minute catch that uh, trade. Um, if I go to this area right here, let's see what it looks like on our 15 again to see if we would have been able to use that as a rule. That was not an entry pattern, so I shouldn't have been looking for a 15 minute trade in that area anyways. So on the lower time frame, if you wanted to take that for three minutes, that's perfectly, perfectly understandable because this is not an entry pattern. It's a level line break. But do you see, usually when you see like a doji and then you have like still indecisive, it's still structure on the lower time frame. The level line break true is here. And then after that, you see how clean this is right here. That's a gem. Because that's 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 pretty advanced. That can even get me. And I made this up. Like if I'm looking at this and I'm like, all right, my level line break area is here. I'm just going to mark that really quick with the white line. I'm looking at this right here. And the reason why I picked this candle is because it's the last good body, right? So I'm looking at that area. Make that five. I'm looking at this area right here. And I see that, okay, price is above. Price finally closed below. So I'm looking like, okay, I should be looking for um, down trades. That pullback that comes right here from this candle, that's interesting, which we'll know where the pullback is. Because the start of this candle. So let's go find that. Let's just take a vertical line. And let's put it here. So we'll see where price actually was when this candle opened up. And then we'll actually see where price was. I'll put another vertical line. Um, after so we can look at both at the same time so we don't have to come back to the higher time frame so let's put that here 
we'll make this one, like we can make them both pink just so we can know what lines we're looking for on the lower time frame. So this right here, this line is the close of this. So we'll see, okay, price is back down. So off of this, we'll know that the level line break was here, but this is where it was confirmed. Like this is a confirmed candle. So I know what those two mean. So I'm going to go to the lower time frame all the way down to the one, just so I can see the exaggerated shapes. We're going to find our pink line. OK, so the level line breaks was here. Like it price broke below. This is actually a pullback. That's cool. So when that candle closed, it was technically a level line break and it came back to the same area and gave you an entry pattern right there. So your entry came sooner because the close of it was already in a pullback. So you know how many people would see this and they'll kind of just try to take it, like try to ride it up for a long trade because it's something opposite than a higher time frame. But when you know that you're looking like, okay, I'm looking for a pullback, but you notice that the pullback is already coming at the close of the candle. So you're looking at the shape. Now, if you're looking at this lower time frame, look at the points. It's like, wait a minute. I mean, I'm kind of in a trend here. I know sometimes if somebody's looking, they might have their trend line right here. And I understand that. But if the market makes a shape and it pushes away good, I'll adjust my trend line because I'm just trying to find what's being respected more. But because this is a, I know that this is a level line break. So I'm looking for a down trade and it comes to an area that is congruent with something else on this chart. And then it gives me the entry pattern right here. If you wanted to take a three minute trade right here, that just makes sense. Look at your target area. This is the last area of resistance. Even, even if you wanted to take it for this one, you still have enough room to let the market push away and catch that entry because you waited for the pullback. Also, when you're waiting for the pullback and you're all the way on the lowest time frame. So if I'm looking for an entry pattern on my for, for my 15 minute trade and I come to this area and you notice how this was the level line. And this doji came from up here to down here and it closed below. I can actually take the doji entry. So my entry could be on this white line and I get all of this movement. You don't necessarily have to wait for this pattern right here because you're already referencing the higher time frame. That's a gem. So with that, boom, you could have caught that move. Now, this is the confirmation right here. So on the confirmation, which means it's under the level line, it closed again. We're just looking for another pullback, right? This is not really a pullback. Look, this cycle doesn't make sense. However, if you wanted to use this area to drop to the five second and find a trade, you can because you have multiple indecisive candles right here. So you potentially can catch this move on the five second for a couple minute trades and be just fine. That's a little bit more advanced. I do say if you're going to do that, but you're trying to average one percent a day. Take those trades with caution. You have to really understand how to use the higher time frame. If you can go from 15 to 1 and accurately hit trades, then you can go from 1 to 5 and hit 1-minute trades too. It's the exact same thing, just quicker. Okay? So you see how this moved, and it came back to the same area. Then it turned that way. Look, look at all the wicks making structure, and then boom, that's the break area right there. This is the last best candle. This closed right here, which means your entry would literally be about in this area right here. I can show you. I, your entry would be about right there. So this candle, the close of this one, boom. You could catch that move right there because you were looking for an actual pullback to enter off of. Okay? Now, let me check something, though, because it isn't always going to move pretty. If this was a 15-minute trade, let me go back and look at... Um, the 15 minute. If this was 15 minute. That mean my entry would have been here. Yeah, that's a clear. Let me go look at the one though. All right. Entry here. 15 minute, I'm good. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It almost came back and got you, but you're still good. And then look, this is another pullback area. 
So even if you would have took this pattern right here, close, you wouldn't have took this pattern because before this pattern closed, you would have noticed that line way back up here. Even if you didn't, even if you would have took this for 15 because it closed down and it was under. So you were looking at that and you took it for 15. That's a clear two. It played for a little bit. Boom. You got the movement. So hopefully that is making sense. It's some things that I want to point out to you and, and reiterate so you can practice looking for them as far as trends are concerned. If I know that I have on my 15 minute a clear zone and an entry pattern, you see how this is a clear zone right here? Look, I can even take this line from right here. No, not the vertical line. I can get rid of that. I want this line. And I can put this line right here on this zone. If I know that I'm looking at this zone and I know that this candle closed, I know that my this is where typically where I'll start working my magic, right? So I'll just take that uh, vertical line from here and we'll put it on this candle. Why are we putting it on the candle after? Because we know when this candle pops up, this candle is closed. I can then go down to my one minute and find my pink line. And I can see now what I'm waiting on a pullback. Watch this pullback right here. You got this pattern, but as this pattern was closing, this was happening. So you probably wouldn't take it. But let's just say you took this pattern for 15 minutes because you at least waited for a piece of the pullback. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Clear. This is how I study. I got a pullback right here. It's another entry pattern. Can I take that? Yes. Is it hard to take that? Yes. Why, Ray? Because I see this. And then look, this wasn't really a strong pullback. So if you don't take that, I totally understand. That's not a strong enough pullback. But because you got a great entry here, you probably like me. I don't know if that's worth it. You know, I'm already in for a good trade. Let this ride out. So this pushes out. You get the 15 minute clear. You're looking at your higher time frame and you notice, OK, I still got room until my pivot zone. So you get a pullback right here. You get an entry pattern right here. Let's say you took this for 15 minutes because you didn't jump back up to your 15 minute and see where you were at with price. You took another 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This 15 closed about in this area. Your entry was right here. It's a close trade, but you would have won it. Right. But do you see how when it does pull back, sometimes it likes to double back before it goes? So if you see a strong pullback like this, let's see. Let's see something really quick. Look, strong pullback, double back, then it moved. Strong pullback, didn't double back, but it bottomed out. Let me see if I can find. Let me see. Okay, this is a trend right here. Pull back, go, pull back, go, pull back, go. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes it'll just go. But as long as you wait for the pullback and you see the entry pattern, and you take those 15 minute trades after the confirmation. Notice that this was exaggerated. So this was already pushed out pretty far. So this pullback happened. And maybe you would have been a little uncomfortable with the way this looked. And I understand that. But if it happened again, and you know that your higher time frame is pro sellers, taking the 15 minute trade in that area is okay because you're you're taking it with the concept of understanding that the higher time frame has confirmed that. The level line break is there. It's, it's broken past that point. That's how you can catch these clean trades. And after that, you just have to get the expiration time right. <clears throat> so if you go down to your one minute chart and you pretty much say, oh, I know I'm trading for my 15 minute chart, but I'm taking three minute trades. You're mad. If you took a three minute trade right here, spiked out. You took a three minute trade right here. You would have won it. Right. If you took a three minute trade in this area right here, one, two, three, mm, close trade. You won it. OK, so you have to understand the time expiration. What chart are you are you looking at? If you want to take a 15 minute trade, that means that I'm looking at least I'm looking at my five minute or my 15 minute chart. That's what that means. If I'm looking at my 15 minute chart, I'm supposed to be putting in 45 minute trades. But because I'm waiting for a pullback. I can get away with a 15 minute trade. It's kind of like saying, hey, I'm waiting for the 15 minute to pull back inside the average of that candle. And then I want to take the trade because I believe it's going to go ahead and move. That's the concept behind that type of trading. Now, if it's a sideways market, even if it's a sideways market on a higher time frame, that the concept for the trend applies because you have to understand on the 15 minute. 
If I know that the market is sideways, kind of like it is right here, on the 15 minute, that's a sideways market. But on the one minute, this is a trend. On the five minute, this is a trend, right? So if you have a higher time frame in a sideways market, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. But if you got the higher time frame, look at this, this is a 15 minute. If you got the higher time frame in a trend, it's going to look slightly different. The lower time frames are going to look more exaggerated. Now, if you're looking at this, this is a trend, but do you see all the wicks that's happening on this trend? That means that on the lower time frame, it's trending. Look, pushed up, structure, pushed up, structure, pushed up, structure. So you had burst, new pivot point, sideways movement on lower time frame, new pivot point, sideways movement on lower time frame, new pivot point. Sideways movement. Uh oh, more sideways movement. So now the lower time frame looks beautiful. Let's just go find this. Hopefully, this is not too far back. I'm just going to find it on the five minute just to show you so it doesn't take too long like it did before. We're just going to connect these wicks just in case you're trading a chart that's not that clean. Hold on, let's delete this. That was an accident. Another trend line. Okay, we just want to connect our wicks. I'm just going to change this. Mm, let's just do teal so I know what I'm looking for. One more teal. Okay, and then I can go down to my five minute and I can go find those teal lines. Let's go see, All right? So sideways movement, look at that, broke above. Made structure, broke above, went sideways again, touched the point, broke again. Like, do you see how you can use that? And because you see this cycle right here doesn't really make a lot of sense on the five minute, does it? But if you connect those wicks and drop down to the one, you will then know what's going on. Remember, if it's a sideways market on the higher time frame, the lower time frame can still trend. So all you have to do is connect wicks on the higher time frame and just drop down to the time frame where the movements make the most sense and you can move accordingly. The only time you're looking for full 15 minute, five minute, 45 minute trades is when you're coming off of an area that has structure. That's what you're looking for. Structure is just obvious sideways movement, obvious zones that have great moves off of them. When you come off of areas like that, the wicks are so important. For instance, here, this right here is an important area. When it got to this important area, it gave you one, two, three, four wicks before it even started to turn in this downward direction. Right. So if you just pay attention to those wicks, let it play out, you'll find the answer. And don't take a trade until it makes total sense. So how are you going to get this down? What I want you to practice is I want you to practice finding a chart. It can be any chart. Let's go look and see what Apple looks like. Find a chart. Find your major zones. After you find the major zones, identify your level line break. But as the level line break is happening or after the level line break is happening, actively follow the chart. You don't necessarily have to put a trade in. I just need you to mark the chart and say, hey, I can actively follow price while it's closing. And I know how to calculate that close into what decision I want to make when I take my trade. You can trade from the 15 to the one. You could trade from the one to the five second. It really depends on you. But this is something that I want to put in the forefront of this. If you cannot think fast, if you're very indecisive and you don't trust yourself a lot when you enter, you probably need to stay away from the five second chart. That does not mean that you can't consider what the one minute is doing by putting a lot of dojis in one space. You can still understand that, hey, on my five second chart, I have a sideways movement right now. So with a sideways movement, I know what type of scenarios come out of that. So I know what my one minute should look like when it's ready to get, you know, to get ready and go. And you can time that quick two minute entry or three minute entry if you want to. So um, just keep that in mind. And I believe that your practice sessions and what you practice on this chart and with, you know, how you use the wicks on here can really help you find even more high quality trades and help you be more effective on the charts. Before I end this video. I just want to remind you that this YouTube channel's goal 
is to not only help you trade better, but it's to just it's to help you build a foundation for your life. Right. You are a business. Your budget, your credit and your trading can really change the way that you live. You don't need a gigantic account to be able to get your life in order to make moves to make your life better. So if you don't have a community that you can tap into where you can be committed and you can have accountability partners and and just an accountability chat where you can talk with other people who are on the same journey as you, then I highly encourage you to join my Discord. I have a free section and I have a paid section. And the free section is just a chance for you to hop into the Discord, be able to catch the podcast messages that I do at least three times a week. Um, Sometimes I do bonus streams for the free Discord, but that's rare. However, I am in the free Discord. I drop profit screens. I answer questions. You know, I talk to members. It's a great way to be able to connect with me. In the paid Discord, I do private class. Excuse me. I do private classes. I do... um, Uh, budgeting. I do, or I have people in the chat that do credit repair. I talk about just how to maintain the right psychology for your account. I drop profit screens. I do live trade sessions. I have other people that trade live with each other. It's just a community of individual traders who trade. This is not a chat that's just going to give you signals. I do mark suggestions and I put suggestions in a chart for what you can look for at a certain chart and you can profit off of. So it's a benefit. If you know how to speak the language that I speak on the pocket options broker and you're in my chat and I drop a market suggestion, you'll be able to take that suggestion to the current chart and be able to find your own trades. The cool thing about that is, is if I ever disappear off of earth, you have a skill where you don't even need the market suggestion. You know how to mark the chart and take the trade. However, sometimes it's just refreshing having somebody else who trades the same way you do to be able to drop a chart and you can go profit off that chart as well. It's a beautiful thing. OK, um, uh, another tier from that is the mentorship program. The mentorship program is comprised of top tier traders. These are individuals that pretty much say, hey, I want you to hold the fire to me. I want you to hold me accountable. I am more committed than the people in my chat. I'm willing to put in more work. I'm willing to do the homework assignments that you assign. I'm willing to check in. You know, I'm willing to talk about my account balance, my goals, my credit, everything. I don't only just want to be a great trader. I want to be a great business. That's what the mentorship program is for. I have private chats where I pretty much keep up with everybody in that program. I do bonus classes. I do secret classes in the paid discord and in the mentorship chat. I have a mentorship vault and a sniper vault, which means it's videos on my YouTube channel that are not public, that are only available for members in the discord. It's a beautiful thing. My Discord server, uh, you can play music while you trade if you want to in certain chat rooms. You can make new friends and set up trade sessions if you want to. And you will even know about in-person events that I host as well. My Discord server, the paid section, is like a Patreon for my YouTube account. I really want to be able to provide high quality information for free for everybody. And the bigger that that chat gets, the better the information can be, the more in tune the information will be, and the more places I can actually go to meet you guys in person and trade with you. I've been to London, Australia, North Carolina, New York, New Jersey. Um, I've done some things around Texas. I've been to Los Angeles. I've been to Miami. I've been to Tennessee. I've been some places. I'm planning on going to Toronto um, and to other places across the world, and I'm getting ready to start a new cycle of traveling to teach in person more. This is not a chat, and I need to end this rant, but this is not a chat that's just talking about getting rich. All right. I know that you can get rich from this. I know that you can be successful from this. This is a chat that's just focused on averaging 1% a day, taking our leverage and averaging 1% a day. That's all that we want. OK, I look forward to seeing you guys in the chat if you're looking for a place to be able to come and actually get this skill down and get busy. And if you're not looking for that, that's OK, because I know you still learned some from the YouTube video. So if you can do me a favor and simply just hit that like button so it helps with the YouTube algorithm so more people can find this video and can find my community. If you can comment on the video and just let me know what you learned today, the number one thing that you learned, I like to see that in the comment section. I'll be sure to read those as I always do and respond to the people who I feel encouraged to respond to Um, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss the new videos that's coming up because it is no other YouTube channel breaking down trading like this. And I'm willing to stick by that. So 
I appreciate you guys for tuning into this YouTube video and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.